Oh, hey, what's happening there, YouTube? It's Brian House here for House Made, and today I'm going to show you how to lay down good, clean, flat welds using an inexpensive Amazon welder. Now, this welder was sent to me by a company called Vever. They're an Amazon-based tooling company. They sell all kinds of great stuff on there. And uh, this would be technically considered a sponsored video since they did send me the welder. But I wouldn't recommend anything that I haven't run through its paces and uh, fully stand behind. You're going to be surprised at how clean these welds come out. I, I was surprised myself, honestly. I started welding with this machine and once I dialed it in, I was really impressed. Now this machine will do 220 or 110. It'll do MIG, TIG and stick. I mean, there's pretty much nothing that this machine can't do. Anyhow, let's get started. A couple of things are going to make your experience welding with flux core a little better. And one is a respirator. This is just like a simple one made by uh, GVS. You can get these on Amazon. Everything you see in this video, by the way, there's going to be links down in the description that'll take you to it so you can, you can find this stuff. Flux core is smoky. Definitely a good idea to wear a respirator. And I like this one because it is small and it'll fit under your welding helmet. I use a little bit of uh, torch dip or nozzle gel, whatever this stuff is called. You can get this in many different forms. I just buy the Hobart stuff because it's inexpensive and it's a good brand. I also have a small little um, hammer that just chips away the flux that that builds up on the outside of the weld and a stainless steel brush this comes in really handy because you can actually clean the weld right off with this and not need a wire wheel wire wheel is preferred but this this will work great too all right so let's just take a second and uh, look at the machine talk about settings and talk about being coming familiar with this actual machine now you can read the manual you can look at all these dials and buttons and everything, but, um, and I'd love to tell you that you can just open the manual, turn this machine on, set it to their recommended settings, and go ahead and weld. With every single welding machine I've ever owned, I have used the manual as sort of an initial guide to kind of get me started, and then I go ahead and dial it in. In this particular machine, the manual is no good. It's just, it's, you know, it's translated from Chinese to, uh, English and it's just uh, not that great but what I did do is I just went ahead and set all these settings dead center so just you know the dial is from 1 to 10 and I just set it to 5 uh, for most of the settings and that actually gave me pretty good results initially I started uh, just with this piece of steel here you can see um, there's diff these aren't the best welds in the world but uh, these two pieces of steel are just designed for me to actually learn how to use this machine and the other philosophy that I like to think about when I get my hands on a new welding machine is that spool of wire that they give you initially, that's just a freebie. You should burn through all of that on scrap steel and learn the machine. That is part of your education. Twist the dials, change your amperage, change your wire speed, just get a chance to actually figure out how this machine behaves with the particular material that you're working with. Um, also, I like to grab a bunch of just scrap pieces of steel like this and just burn through it, you know, weld lines on it, put it together. Tube steel is really great because it's got these radiuses built right into it so you can lay welds right down into it. Now look at this particular weld. Look at all that splatter. That was my first test weld on this machine and I actually had the polarity wrong uh, on, the, on the machine. Even though I marked it, I took a, a white marker and I marked those polarities, I had it backwards. So if you're seeing a lot of splatter and things like that, most likely your polar polarity is uh, backwards. So let's go ahead and grab a couple pieces of tube steel that are clean. We're gonna clamp them together, we're gonna tack them together, and then we're gonna run a few different lines uh, to bond them together, and we're gonna learn about this machine. Okay, so let's put a couple of tack welds. Uh, we're gonna do four total tack welds, uh, one on each, or two on each side. And uh, when, I, when I say tack, this is a 3 16 inch material, or 0 0.188 uh, tube steel. We're gonna count to one 1,000 when we do our tack welds. And uh, that's been something that's served me pretty well when I'm working with any material that's over an eighth of an inch. Again, the settings are just somewhere in the middle. All right, take a look at those tacks. Can you believe that's flux core? It's 
beautiful, right? Good, hot, penetrative uh, weld there and clean because we used our wire brush. Clean them right off. So now our, our tube steel is stuck together. We're gonna run some test beads. Okay, so let's take a minute and talk a little bit about technique. Uh, you're gonna see me guiding uh, the TIG torch with my left hand and my right hand. They're working in concert with one another. And we are about a quarter inch, uh, but you know, three sixteenths to a quarter of an inch away from where we want our weld to penetrate. And then I'm just gonna make slow, small circles, probably about a quarter inch uh, in diameter, these circles. And I'm gonna move fairly slowly. You're gonna see that, uh, you know, I'm filling in the weld, I'm just moving slow. And I'm gonna take a second to look at, you know, how much filler am I putting in this? You know, I don't want this too proud. I don't want the circles to be too far apart. And this is all part of your learning experience with welding is that you're going to notice like, hey, at this particular hot, uh, at this, at this particular voltage, at this particular wire speed, you know, I'm, I'm going to hit that sweet spot for this particular type of material. It's not going to apply to every single type of steel you're working with. But in this case, it's going to give you uh, an, a kind of a gauge, which is the reason why I chose a big, long 16 inch piece of steel here, because I plan on using all of this to learn where I need to be. OK, so you can see that's uh, not too bad of a weld. It's a little bit proud of the tube steel, so I could have moved a little bit faster. But look at the quality of that weld. That looks pretty good. You can see it's sticking up about a 16th of an inch or so. Uh, but good penetration and nice uniform circles. All right, so now let's take a piece of one inch round and we're gonna tack this to this tube steel here and then we're gonna run some beads between the tube and the round. One other thing I'd like to mention is get yourself a good welding helmet. You don't need to spend $500 on a, on a helmet to, in order for it to work great. I've got uh, this one here, which is the one from Yes Welder. I got it on Amazon. I bought helmets at Home Depot and Harbor Freight and they all work about the same. Uh, just keep that in mind. You really want to be able to see your work. That's super important. Also, I did burn through most of that spool and spent hours upon hours of time just familiarizing myself with this machine. This is more about the philosophy of approaching welding rather than uh, you know, specific little things that you can do to improve your process. You can watch hundreds and hundreds of videos on YouTube and those situations with those different people are not going to be unique to you. You know, your machine is one thing, the material is another, and your skill set is another. So just like any other skill, the more you do it, the better you get at it. Listen guys, if you got something out of today's video, make sure you hit that thumbs up button. And if you're not already subscribed, that subscribe button. And if you click that little bell, you get a notification every time I upload something to YouTube. There's many ways to support my channel. Uh, you, the, by far the best way is to go to my website, housemade.us, buy pieces, parts, and plans for the Revolution 2x72 belt grinder project. And also go out to Instagram and Facebook and find me at those social media platforms because uh, on a daily basis, I'm updating with different projects I've got going on, like the Forge project. Uh, that's something I haven't shown here on YouTube that I'm, I'm basically prototyping a forge and ribbon burner setup. Anyway, guys, I hope to see you on the next video. My name is Brian House, and this has been House Mate. Rise a kettle, quiet, so